Is this for families or fanboys? You're watching Beyond the Trailer's review of the Lego Movie. What is happening? You're the special. And the prophecy states that you're the most important person in the universe. That's you, right? Uh, yes. That's me. Relax, everybody. I'm here. Batman? Awesome! Who are you here to see? I'm here to see your butt. Oh my gosh! Uh, pow! Wham! Uh, uh. First try. Yes, even Warner Brothers can't decide what they have on their hands here. This is a movie entirely made out of Legos, yet it also features the Justice League. And fascinatingly, both elements are appearing on the big screen for the very first time. One would think we could all share and that the Lego movie would be for both families and fanboys. But then why did Warner Brothers only offer Thursday night showings at 10 p.m. and later? See, it's become common practice for a movie to actually open Thursday night, so the additional box office revenue can be added to Friday's tally. Just another way that Hollywood has figured out how to pump up their numbers along with IMAX and 3D. I call it box office steroids, except they're totally legal. However, while I saw Frozen at 7 p.m. the Thursday before it opened, I was stuck seeing the Lego movie at 10 p.m., 10.40 if I wanted to see it in 3D. Do those sound like family-friendly movie times to you? Families have serious box office muscle, so why exclude them? In contrast, fanboys can be an awfully fickle demographic. Sometimes they show up, sometimes they don't. But is the only thing that puts this movie in the family category that it's made up of Legos? Co-directors and co-writers Phil Lord and Chris Miller do have a big family movie on their resume and also a fanboy movie. Those are actually the only two movies they've made so far, so I guess the Lego movie will be the tiebreaker. But the voice cast? Pure fanboy. How many kids, or parents for that matter, are fans of Chris Pratt, Elizabeth Banks, or Will Arnett? Hardly. Family-friendly safe bets like Tom Hanks and Tim Allen or Broadway sensation Idina Menzel. I mean, sure, there are family-fanboy hybrid successes like The Incredibles, but there are also flops like Megamind, which was really good. So are Legos enough to bring families into theaters, and are fanboys still into Legos? The company does have a pretty big presence at Comic-Con, and Chris Miller's own Lego Space Village playset appears in the film, but he built it back when he was a kid. Boy, do I want to play with some Legos now! If you see this movie with kids, Prepare to have a trip to the toy store directly following. I wanted to go to the toy store and buy some Legos, but because of that damn 10 p.m. Uh, movie time, it was like midnight when I got out, and of course, there were no toy stores open. But also, the movie really made me want to step up my Lego game. The sets that they built here are phenomenal, just absolutely breathtaking, so intricate. Uh, it's just like a being literally in like a toy, you know, wonderland. Uh, and also make sure you see it in 3D because it's kind of the difference between uh, watching someone else play with Legos and playing with Legos yourself. This is one of those films which needs to be seen in uh, 3D. And you know, the, you might think, well, you know, the cynical person might say, oh, hey, well, this movie just exists as a giant ad for Legos. And as you said, Grace, it makes you want to go and buy Legos. And, uh, you know, I don't want to go and see a movie that's going to make me have to, you know, go buy a, a bunch of stuff afterwards. And I would say that is the cynical approach, but I don't think that's where this movie's heart is. This movie, by the way, has a huge heart, a surprisingly huge heart. There's something so special about this movie that they've managed to keep under wraps I'm impressed. And I don't want to ruin it for you. I'm not going to discuss it. But the only reason I even brought it up is because I think it's so important to be surprised by this that I want you to be on guard not to let anybody else ruin it for you. So until you see the movie, be very wary on message boards with other people's reviews uh, and also when talking to someone else who's seen it. Be like, don't ruin this movie for me. I will destroy you if you do, because it's it's that special. And it's so refreshing that Hollywood can still manage to surprise us that not everything has to be given away in the advertisements uh, or on, you know, leaks online in stories. And I also think this is a really special uh, asset for the Lego company. It is so nice for them to have something like this uh, for their, their brand, because it not only perfectly captures what it's like to play with Legos, but what I imagine is the mission statement for the company as to why their toys exist and what they hope their toys accomplish. Uh, so that was really great to see. Uh, the movie was just so good. I'm actually going to make a comparison here that I feel is apt. Some of you might not believe. I feel like I'm one of those people who came out of Avatar and was like, this is the best thing since Star Wars. And some people were like, get out of here. But I honestly feel that this movie is on par with Toy Story as far as an all-ages film that perfectly captures 
uh, a unique perspective on a universal experience. And even though, this is also even more impressive, even though both movies are about essentially playing with toys, they manage to be unique from uh, each other. The Lego movie in no way copies Toy Story, but I think it, it's a nice um, companion film to that. Uh, you know, it, and it, I think that's so great that this film is able to uh, operate on that level without ripping, you know, Pixar off what they did. It's just as unique, and just as special. Uh, and I have, but the reason I bring Toy Story up is not only the correlation of the toys, but I haven't seen an all ages movie that's this special or sophisticated since Toy Story. And, you know, you would think sophisticated for Phil Lord and Chris Miller. What? But these guys, wow, what a talented team for Hollywood to have. They, If they were a hot property before off of Cloudy with the Chance of Meatballs 21 Jump Street, they have 22 Jump Street coming up, they're going to be even hotter now. Uh, they are three for three. This is the, only the third film they've made, as I pointed out in the open. Uh, every single one of them is fantastic. I think they actually get, are getting better with each movie. And as I said, this movie is certainly as funny as Cloudy with the Chance of Meatballs balls and 21 Jump Street. I think this movie is as funny as that. I laughed out loud several times in the theater. Uh, I just really thought it was great. Uh, but as I said, it's more sophisticated than those other, those other films. It has a message, it has a heart that really caught me off guard. Now I also want to say that I think it was a, one of the strokes of genius about this movie was to actually animate Legos, you know, like almost in a stop motion uh, feel to it, like you were actually playing with Legos. In the past, Lego direct-to-video movies have just animated in the style of Legos. And I think that this makes all the difference because it really, you just so instantly relate to it. It's like playing with Legos with a friend. And it has that mentality, uh, you know, that sometimes they will put in like special effects which is just someone's voice being like pew pew pew, you know, and you're like, that's what I do. Uh, and it's just so much fun. And the voice cast, by the way, Phenomenal across the board. Everybody is game to have a good time. I thought Morgan Freeman was particularly lively. Elizabeth Banks, I'm sad to say, was probably the weakest, uh, but I guess she was playing more of a, a straight man kind of character. You know, she wasn't, her character didn't have a lot of fun anyway, uh, but her lines were good. Uh, and Alison Brie was very funny in her role, so it, it, that was nice. But the real standout, Will Arnett though, Will Arnett nailed Batman. So good, so good. You know, and you've, there have been a lot of clips and a lot of trailers for this movie, but trust me, there is stuff you have yet to see. When you go to this movie, there is a whole aspect of it and dialogue. Liam Neeson also, fantastic. Liam Neeson was so funny. He, and he, again, very game, willing to act out some really hilarious stuff uh, and, you know, not being like, I'm too cool for school. Loved it. He was so good. I can't believe I almost forgot to mention him. Loved him. Liam Neeson, Morgan Freeman, Will Arnett, the real superstars, but the biggest superstar is Chris Pratt. He really is fantastic in this film, and it makes me much more excited to see him uh, in the flesh in Guardians of the Galaxy and what he's going to do there. Uh, I think he is a perfect casting here. He was perfect there, and I think it just shows that he'll be perfect casting in Guardians of the Galaxy, and this should be a big year for him. So I can't recommend this movie highly enough. It's, it's, these movies are very rare, which is not only fun and good, uh, but special, and I just had such a wonderful time, and maybe I will buy some Legos this weekend. Uh, it, but it really, it just, I, I just can't say enough good things about it. So I'm curious, did you guys see the Lego movie? What did you think about it? Uh, please, please, please don't spoil it for anybody in the comments. Be very careful with what you're writing. If you want to write a spoiler, uh, please just go in there and just put a lot of spoiler warnings first, because as I said, this is such a unique, wonderful experience. I don't want to ruin it for everybody. All right, so thank you for tuning in. Thank you for waiting for this patiently for this review, uh, and you can check out some more episodes right now.